Good morning, fantasy football fans, and welcome to another episode of the Brady Fantasy Football Podcast. This week, we're jumping in to the final regular season week, and we're going to take a look at week 14, the results there. So it's a little bit different. i got a different setup, so I'm not going to be able to... I don't think I'm going to be able to do the camera and the voice and all this kind of stuff. So it'll be a little, a little bit different. The very first thing we're going to look at is the standings. So we got Mahase, 10-4, and four, standing alone. Kugdin, 9-5. and five. Liberty Bibbity, 9-5. Myself, at 4, at 4th place, 7-7. Seven and seven. Just ahead of Corey, who's sitting at 5th at 7-7. Seven and seven. Brian, 6-8. and eight. Travis, 6-8. and eight. Jake, 6-8. and eight. And then we have Steve at 5-9 and nine and Amy at 5-9. And, and heading into this last week... Before we jump into the last week's matchups, heading into this week 15, there's some pretty big implications for playoffs. First off, we got me going up against Aaron, who's on a seven game win streak um, to fight for that fourth place. Depending on basically every single match here has, except for Majace versus Amy, has a um, playoff implication here. Um, or at least a standings order, I should say. Maybe maybe not affecting everything, but Brian Brian's going for a win. I need a win. Um, Corey needs a win, and um, I'm not really sure how it'll work with um, Jake or Travis if they end up getting a win here. But um, I think it's still kind of if me or Corey lose, and Brian and Jake or Tr- Travis win, then I think that there's a chance that there's a big flip flop here. Um, because I don't really know how the tiebreakers are going to settle it. So there's still one, two, three, four, five people kind of up for grabs for that last fourth place spot. Um, cause I don't think at this point, but Jace, um, Scott and Aaron have clinched in terms of like, they are going to the playoffs cause they have a two game win, two games or more ahead of us. Um, so it's coming down to it. Really big implications here. Um, and we will see what happens but first we're gonna take a look at last week so last week week 14 we had wash like belichick myself versus herb your enthusiasm in a game that um i really needed to win uh to be honest really we was really hoping i'd be able to pull this one off <laughs> but jake jake decided to show up i guess this week with debo samuel getting 38 points um i thought it was pretty pretty good at the end of the week with evan ingram getting 33.5 points early on to give me a nice little lead but uh jordan love really poop in the bed uh, Stefan Diggs pooping the bed. Um, really, really didn't do me any favors. Stefan Diggs getting 6.4 points and Jordan Love getting 8.9 points versus the New York Giants. Uh, really set me up for failure here. Whereas um, on the opposite side of the ball, Jake had um, Derrick Henry, Devon A. Chain, Keenan Allen, Debo Samuel, Cole Komet, Javon Table. Basically, everybody did their job except for Jared Goff and Brandon McManus. So he, he had a great week, 135 points. Puts him at the second most on the week so he he really when it came through and he needed to uh, defeat me to, to, to keep his playoff chances alive he came through so he's still got a chance um i still got a chance i'm still holding that fourth spot somehow um but really it's it's a close one so uh well played jake congratulations and if you end up going to playoffs because of this one i can't be that mad about it you done great um you really came through at the end if that if that is the case um but Obviously sucks for me. Would have liked to get the win and feel a little bit more confident heading into this week. It would have separated me from Corey and everybody else by a win. So that would have been nice. But unfortunately, that is not the reality we live in. So the next one, we got Jace versus Travis with Majace pulling out, um, I think, a season low for himself, 87 points. Um, I don't think he scored less than this the entire year. And uh, Travis came through 98 points, is getting enough to win. Um, the big surprise this week was um, Ezekiel Elliott getting 28 points. I don't know if he knew that Ramondre was still going to be out or not, but 28 points from Ezekiel Elliott versus Pittsburgh is freaking ins- like I mean, no one, very few people would have had the the foresight to be able to pick that and be able to put that in place. So congratulations, Jay- Jason, being able to do that. It didn't help you win at all because you had so many other people not do anything, which is unfortunate. But uh, Josh Jacobs, 7, Mike Evans, 1.8. I mean, Nico Collins, 2.3, he got hurt. I mean, your, your number one guy was Ezekiel Elliott. So that tells you kind of all you need to know, I guess, because their second place was the Miami Dolphins at 16.96. On the other side of the ball, Patrick Mahomes did yeah, 14 points versus Buffalo in that weird 
I mean, he was really upset about the offsides thing at the end, but we've all seen the clip. He was clearly offsides. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Mahomes, but clearly offsides. There's no, no, no way to get around that. And then Christian McCaffrey, 18 points, doing his job. And the 49ers, 11.76. Devontae Smith, TJ Hawkinson, Jalen Waddle. I mean, he had enough. More. This comes down fantasy football is just more people doing their job or not. And the standard is the standard. Had more people doing their job. So Travis gets in. Two-game win streak keeps his playoff dreams alive heading into this last week, so he still has a chance. I have not crunched the numbers another percentage-wise, but there's a chance, depending on how this all falls in this last week, that he could sneak into that fourth spot, depending on how the tiebreakers work out. Next, Silver Spartans versus the Vicious, vicious Tiger-Headed Clex. Silver Spartans comes through in a big win to hold off Brian. Um, absolutely crazy to get some redemption here towards the end of the year. Um, Raheem Mostert. And Cooper Cup carrying the team there. 23 from Raheem, 26 from Cooper Cup, 14 from Metcalf, and 10 from Chris Godwin. And then a big one, 22 points from Brandon Aubrey versus Philadelphia. So absolutely crazy. That was the third most points on his team and helped carry him to victory there. So a good pick, a good, good start there. Um, good start there, Steven. It was a pretty... I mean, this was a back and forth. You're looking at the chart, which I'm, I don't know if I'll be able to show it on this episode, but it's a back and forth all the way up, um, up till the end there where Steve pulled ahead because of Mostert on that on that uh, Sunday night football, I believe it was. Absolutely crazy. Maybe it was Monday night football, actually. Monday night football versus the Tennessee Titans. Um, Tyreek Hill only getting 10 points because he hurt his ankle, which is unfortunate for Brian. I think heading into that game, I expected him to be able to pull it off, but Tyreek Hill being held 10 points and Raheem Mostert getting 23 that's about a, I mean, that's the eight points he needed, basically, the difference there. So Raheem Mostert really car- carrying him there towards the end. Um, Brian did great um, on some of his picks. Devonta Adam, 13. Taiji Spears, David Njo- Njoku getting 28 points for him. Rasheed Rice getting 18 points for him. The New Orleans Saints, an excellent start versus the Carolina Panthers for 26 points. But um, he had some stinkers. CJ Stroud, only 2.6 points versus the New York Jets. And Gus Edwards, 1.5 versus LA. Um, it's the difference makers there. So with that... Brian's playoff streams are still alive. There's a chance, depending how this next week falls. And um, Silver Spartan stays in ninth place, ahead of 10th, to maybe not have to sing the national anthem. So, excellent work, Steven. Well played, Brian. On to the next one. Next one. This is, you know, why Amy chose the team name here. Coog did versus Against All Odds, and Against All Odds comes through with an 8-point victory in the 14th week after moving herself to 4-9. and nine. So... I, I would have, you know, this moves uh, this moves Scott down to second place. So when Jace gets the sole first place spot there, um, she was led by Lamar Jackson, 35 points, and DJ Moore, 26 points. Um, 128 points total on the other side of the ball. Josh Allen, Joe Mixon, and Drake London were doing their jobs. I mean, he didn't have a bad week. 120 to 128, Amy just had a better week. That, that's all it comes down to, right? Evan Kamara, Travis Etienne. He just, she just had a little bit of edges here and there, and the real, the big winner was Lamar Jackson at 35 points, was the one that kind of pushed her over the edge there. Matt Gay getting minus two for kicking on the Indianapolis Colts does not help at all, obviously. I mean, if you had another kicker in, that might have been the difference, but you never know. You live and you learn. So against all odds, Amy gets a, a dub here in week 14. To try to keep her, I guess, out of tenth place is what she's fighting for at this point. Because if she, she there's a chance she does not end last, which would be um, really a feat at this point. So, uh, best of luck, you two next week. Um, Coog gets set. He, there's not really much he can do. He's just hoping to, to to keep that dub. I, I mean, if I was him, he's probably going to play Aaron, and Aaron's the scariest team right now. He got another most points on the week, which I think brings him up to eight or nine. Eight or nine weeks of the most points scored out of 15 is insane. I mean, that's two-thirds of the season where he's the top score, point scorer. So he's just really put together a great team. So great job, Aaron. Um, well played, Amy. Well played, Scott. And best of luck next week. Our final one. This is the one that, uh, I mean, I, we knew it was coming. Liberty Bibby versus Team 9. <laughs> I was hoping that Liberty Bibby would be able to defend team nine there from being able to sneak into the playoffs this is his seventh in a row his team is just crazy i mean he got the most points again on the week which i can't believe so he's at 140 to 105 so most on the week by seven it looks like and 
I mean, really, just going down the list, there's not not the weakest part part of his team is the Houston Texans versus the New York Jets at six points. Everything else, Dak, 17, David Montgomery, 11, Rashad White, 25, A.J. Brown, 16, CeeDee Lamb, 19, Jake Ferguson, 12, Brandon Ayuk, 18, and Justin Tucker, 12. No one went like crazy. I mean, Rashad White, 25 points is the biggest one. Everyone just did good. You know what I mean? 18 points, 19 points, 16 points, 17 points. Everyone's doing their job. Everyone's showing up. He continues to be able to put a team together every week without leaving very many points on the bench. Um, he did leave Brees Hall on the bench this week, but I mean, in terms of what he, the total, we're talking about mm, 14 points maybe, right? Besides everything else there is, is, I think he made the right move. So um, absolutely crazy. I just don't know how he keeps doing it. He's just built a really great team this year and he, heading into next week, he has a chance to take the second spot from Coop did if he ends up winning, which would be crazy to go from, I think he was at eighth place, two and five for a second there. And now he's on a seven game win streak and could finish second. So quite the Cinderella story. Um, he talked about fading off into obscurity, but really he just, it was a, it was a fake. It was a big fake. He went two and five just to give us all hope. And then came screaming back with no mercy for the last seven weeks. So I'm going to play him this week. We'll see what I can do. <laughs> but I'd, I'd be lying if I wasn't saying I was uh, quaking in my boots a little bit, you know. I need this win. I need this win, Aaron. So on the other side of the ball, Corey. 105. Um, he left Garrett Wilson on the bench, which was an ideal. But um, really the big... The big ouchie boo-boo here is Justin Herbert going down after getting 1.84 points, which is unfortunate. Uh, he's got no other quarterbacks on the bench, so he's going to have to have pick one up heading into the final week of the year here. Um, he's got Polar who did his job. Jameer Gibbs did good. Pittman did good. Olave did good. Laporta having kind of an off week compared to what he normally does. He's been putting up hella points. He got 4.7. And James Cook, 25 points. I mean, his team didn't do bad at all. A couple stinkers there. The, the big one was Justin Herbert getting injured is the big kind of thrown in his side. Um, and if he would have started Garrett Wilson, he would have gotten closer. And if Justin Herbert played a whole game, he had a chance. But um, really unfortunate because he needed the win just like how I needed the win. But, I mean, I'm I'm rushing up against him, so I'm, I'm okay with that. This week, I, you know, that's the last one for the week. So now we're going to dive into week 15 with big implications. And my God, my God, there's some big implications here. I'm up against Aaron. I have to defeat him if I want my playoff spot. I don't see a way that I lose this and still get in because... Where everyone else is sitting, I mean, all the other matchups, I don't see how someone is not getting ahead of me, basically. Especially between, like, Travis and Brian. If one of them wins and then I lose, I don't know how the tiebreaker shakes out. So I might lose my spot. So the only way that I can, I have the, you know, the fate of, of the playoffs in my own hands is if I win this week. So I don't expect any mercy from Aaron. And um, I can tell by the way that he's got his team in there. He's got the Cowboys defense back in versus Buffalo. He, I mean, he's not he's not holding any punches, that's for sure. He's got his full, he's got Terry McBride in there. Or Terry McBride, is that his name? Yeah, Trey McBride, Terry McBride. It's funny. Trey McBride in there. CeeDee Lamb, he's got Brees Hall in there versus Miami. I mean, I'm, I'm prepared for a beating, but I'm going to give it my all. Dak Prescott versus Sam Howell. I mean, let's see what we can do with the rookie. I, I am pulling maybe the most controversial move I can think of this 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 week by I think Stefan Diggs versus Dallas. He has not been able to perform like produce versus any of these top defenses. So I I don't I don't trust Stefan Diggs. So I think heading into my final week with playoff on the line, I mean Denver seven points, New York Jets five points. He got put up 19 versus Philly, but everyone's putting up 19 versus Philly. And then Kansas City, 6.4. I just, I don't trust him. You know what I mean? It says that his his uh, production has dropped significantly since Joe Brady was promoted to offensive coordinator in week 11. So I think that's the change. They're just not using him as much or something. But really, I mean, heading into this final week, I don't trust Stefan Diggs versus Dallas. So I will be... He will be right in the bench heading into my final week, and I am promoting Jaden Reed to save my team, which last week he put up 20 points versus the New York Giants. This week he's up against Tampa Bay. It's a risk. I'm not saying it's not a risk, but I, I don't know what else to do because I don't trust Stefan Diggs. So, and Noah Brown is, is questionable 
Ramon J. Stevenson is out. I mean, I have DeMario Douglas, but he hasn't done... He was out the last two weeks, and I don't trust the Patriots' offense at all. You know what I mean? So I'm take, taking a risk, throwing in Jaden Reed and Puka Nakua, and um, hoping for the best because I don't think Stefan Diggs will be able to get it done. So thanks thanks for your work this season, Stefan. But when it, when I need you most, I, I cannot put my faith in you. So fingers crossed. Best of luck, Aaron. And by that, I mean fuck you. <laughs> Next, the standards, the standard versus the vicious tiger-headed cluck. Ryan's off to a great start, 25 points from Devontae Adams. Um, playoff chances are still, you know, in the air here. So this is a big game for both of them because they need they need a win. I mean, the 63 versus 21 victory versus the Los Angeles Chargers is a huge win to, to Brian there, 25 points. So great start from Brian. He's projected to still lose despite that. So we'll see how that goes. Um, looks like, uh, you know, Brian's had some quarterback troubles this year with Joe Burrow being out. And then um, C.J. Stroud, now doubtful after his game last week. So he's got Browning in, Jake Browning, the backup to Joe Burrow. And we'll see how that goes up against Patrick Mahomes, who's playing New England, which might be a slaughter. So best of luck, you two. We'll see what happens. I made the best best team win. And then uh, our next one against all odds versus Majace. And against all odds here, um, projected to, to win. Um, Justin Jefferson's questionable. DJ Moore's questionable. Um, she has Christian Kirk on IR, but on the other side, Jacob, Josh Jacobs is inactive. Jonathan Taylor's out and Nico Collins is questionable. Um, looks like he's put Justin Fields in over, um, Tua Tagalova, who's up against the New York Jets. And really, I mean, Jace is just competing for first place and Amy is competing to stay out of last. So an interesting, uh, juxtaposition there, um, doesn't really affect playoffs at all here. I don't think, I mean, it could affect if, uh, Jace loses and Scott wins. I guess it will affect who has to play Aaron potentially, but um, we'll see. I mean, there's a chance here that I think Aaron could sneak into first. Is that right? Yeah, nine and five. Yeah, I mean, if Jace loses and Kugdit loses, Aaron could end on top if he wins, which is kind of crazy. So we'll see what happens. Uh, best of luck you do. Next one, Team 9 versus Silver Spartans. Um, I need Steve to defeat Corey for my best chances to be able to be able to get into playoffs. He's got Jalen Hurts in. I mean, his team has pretty much stayed the same for the most part here. He's been pretty lucky without injuries. And then on the other side, we got Jared Goffin again, it looks like, for Corey. And it'll be it'll be interesting. The, the, the projected points have it where Steve is going to win, but it's going to be close. Um, Corey did have Jacoby Myers play for 15.68 points in that big win against the LA Chargers, which is uh, obviously helpful there. So we'll see how that goes. And then, I mean, best of luck you two. The, the playoff made the odds ever be in your favor because at this point it's kind of anybody's game. Um, and then finally, we got Herb Your Enthusiasm versus Kugdit. Um, Kugdit is projected to win, but... Um, Ooh, yeah, and uh, sorry, Jake, I said ooh because I saw that you had, a, in fact, started Eckler versus Las Vegas there, who only got 7.8 points in his in his game, so not a great start. Um, I understand why you benched A-Chain, but um, versus the New York Jets there, they got a great run defense, but, I mean, we'll end up seeing which one was the right choice here by the end of the week. Um, this one does, again, have some playoff. You know, Jake can get into playoffs, and Scott could hold second place or even jump into first if he wins and J Jace loses. So I guess they're, all these games matter in the sense of standings and who's going to play who, but really um, it doesn't affect Scott's ability to get into the playoffs, I guess, is when I say that. So, yeah, that's it for this week. Um Best luck to everybody there. Um, before I, I go, I will go ahead and take a look at the coach rating to see where we're at heading into the final week of the year. And um, the winner so far heading into week 14 is uh, Steve. 140 points left on the bench um, total, which is 35 points less than the next guy. And then we have Corey, um, Aaron, myself, Brian, Jake, Travis, Amy, Scott, and then last place is uh, Majace, who is right now holding first place in the league and has left 267 points on the bench, which is the most by about 22. So 
the way that he's picked his team and been able to do that is pretty crazy. So great job. Um, the last thing I'll do before I leave you guys this week is um, we have a couple couple changes on the on the transaction report I see. I see Justin Herbert was dropped and Geno Smith was added for Corey. Best of luck there with that. Um, looks like Scott added Jason Myers and dropped Matt Gay after his minus two points last week. Solid, solid move. Uh, Jace picked up Justin Fields and drafted Dallas, Dallas Godert, which we've already talked about. And then uh, Steve has picked up uh, Shigozium Okomo and dropped Jonu, Jonu Smith. And then he added Amari Cooper and dropped Rashid Shahid. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and it looks like, oh, no. So, I mean, Team 9 added Geno Smith and then has since dropped Geno Smith and added Jared Goff. So, he's got Jared Goff in this week which I already talked about. So yeah, those are all the transactions. Um, Everyone's getting ready for the final week. Um, Best of luck, everybody. It all comes down to this, um, to see a whole season worth worth optimizing and effort comes into this final, final matchup to see who will be able to win. So best of luck, everybody. And um, (laughs) hold on on to your butts (laughs) because it's going to be a wild ride. Um, Thank you all for listening. Appreciate the time, and we will uh, be back to kind of our normal scheduled programming next week for our first week of playoffs. I also have some regular season awards and stuff that we're going to go into. Um, Maybe I'll wait for the end of the season. I don't know, but I think it'd be fun to kind of take a look at everyone's season, how it's gone. Uh, It's been very, very fun playing with you all, and I appreciate the time and effort you all put into it. And um, best of luck to everybody. May the best team get that fourth spot on the playoffs. Um, And yeah. This has been the Brady Fantasy Football Podcast, where if you're listening, your family, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.